Um, welcome back guys, Mr. G here. So in the previous video, we just did a nice recap of what we covered in grade 11, um, excuse me, grade nine, things like um, expanding and simplifying. We saw what happens whenever you have to square a binomial. Now, there are other types of interesting thing. What is, um, now, what about a binomial, okay? Okay, what about a product? Uh, okay, what uh, rather not a product? What about the sum and the difference of the same uh, of a binomial which has exactly equal um, or you can say same terms? Okay, so in other words, what I mean is this: What if I have a plus b and then the same numbers subtract each other? Okay, what what what, what is the answer for this? What's gonna happen if I expand and then simplify? Now, if you think about this, expanding guys literally means foil, okay? Then simplify means check if there are any like terms and group. So, or, or, so you cannot, in, when you have something that is factorized, remember this is factorized form. Maybe let me say, let me mention that this is factorized form form so this in factorized form so for me to even to, to 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 simplify i must first start by expanding and to expand means foil first so I, i'm going to multiply here a times a okay there now what is positive times negative remember snl negative then this is a times b positive and positive is a plus and then I'm gonna write, okay, it's fine. I'll, I'll write it as B, A, B times A. Positive times negative is negative, and this is B squared. And you realize this is actually A squared minus AB plus AB minus B squared. Now let's check, what are the like terms here? This thing here actually is a zero because you, it's like you have minus one plus one, okay? So I'm left with A squared minus b squared oh seriously <clears throat> is this thing always the case or is this just a coincidence well let us try another one here yeah what if uh for sure then let's say how about 2x plus 1 into 2x minus 1 what, what should this thing be again i'm gonna foil and i'll start skipping some steps now this is four x squared minus 2x plus 2x minus 1 squared which is just 1 and guess what again how okay what do i have left 4x squared minus 1 so what is going on guys is there a pattern like is this a miracle or this is always the case well um i'll, I'll take any term again i'll say 3y minus two maybe it's because i've been starting with a plus at all times so how about i say 3y minus 2 into 3y plus 2. let's see if this thing still works so i, I get 9y squared here i have plus okay i'm foiling 6y and i have minus 6y and i have minus 4. wait a minute this thing again is there so this is 9y squared minus for what on earth is going on well i hope you have noticed the pattern or you know about it this guys is actually something that we call difference of perfect squares okay um so what is happening actually you can see what is happening here remember coming this way we are simplifying okay but if we are going to go up, we will be factorizing. Okay, remember those opposites. So, in simplified form, we see that this thing is actually difference of perfect squares. Okay, or you can say difference of two squares. Okay, let me use that term because that's what you use. Difference of two squares 
and now you know I'm going to say dots, okay? Uh, the lazy mathematician again, okay? So this is difference of two squares because this thing is a square, that thing is a square, the, te the sign between them is a minus. The same thing here. This is a perfect square here. That's a perfect square. If you don't see this, you got to realize that four can be written as two squared, and that thing is like that, a squared. And if you do use laws of exponent, that thing is that. The same thing here, guys, nine is three squared. So you can see that means we kind of have a formula here. Whenever, guys, you have an expression of this nature, x squared minus y squared, and the question says factorize, then what you have to do straight away without making yourself tired, cracking your mind, you can just say, ah, it's going to be x minus y into x plus y. And yes, even if you said x plus y into x minus y, you are absolutely correct. How about simplifying? Suppose then we take a twist and we say simplify. What are we simplifying? Well, let's say they give you a factorized form. They say, well, uh, simplify 6x, okay, plus 1 into 6x minus 1. Guys, the moment you realize that this term is the same as that term, that term is the same as that term, and the signs are different in each bracket, then without even thinking, you know, this is going to be 6 all squared minus 1 all squared. That's it. And then you know this is going to be, um, let me just throw in that little step. This is going to be 6 squared x squared minus 1. And this is 36 x squared minus 1. This is the beauty of understanding that simplifying is just the reverse of factorization. And now, because we have noticed this pattern, we no longer have to track our brains whenever we come up with an expression that happens to be difference of two squares. So I urge you guys at all times to watch out for this and make sure you can actually relate and factorize this. So <clears throat> let's look into what happens when you multiply a binomial and a trinomial. Okay, and this is where I'm going to end this video. Okay, this is the last thing that you're going to do. So suppose I have A minus B and I want to multiply this by A squared minus, let's say, 2AB plus maybe B squared. Okay, <clears throat> so what should this simplify to? Well, again, guys, you kind of have to foil, but now this one is kind of tedious. It will get you tired, but you just have to hang in there. You've got to multiply this thing by that thing, and by that thing, and by that thing. you have got to do the same thing, this thing by that thing, by that thing, and by that thing. That's what you've got to do. So let's see. What is a times a squared? Maybe let me just write it here. This is a times a squared because this is new. Then now here we've got to be careful. Signs first, positive and negative is negative. And then I'm going to have what? A times 2ab, okay? Then again, this thing to that, what are the signs? They're positive. Then I have a times b squared. Then here, I'm having minus, so I must have minus here because that's going to be positive times minus plus is negative. And then I've got, I'm going to have now B times A squared. Then here I'm going to have negative times negative is positive. Then I have B times 2AB. And then finally negative times positive is negative. Then I have B times B squared. Then this guy is goes down to what? This is a cubed here. I keep my minus sign. a times 2ab, uh, 2a squared b, plus here I'll have a b squared minus a squared b, okay?
then I'm going to have plus then 2a what b squared okay and finally minus b cubed now are there any like terms and this is the critical part okay i wouldn't really want you guys to miss this the critical part here is let's check is there an a cube somewhere no there's no a cube somewhere so i'm okay now let's see 2a squared b i must look for a term that has got an a squared a squared and a b let's see here is an a squared here is a b those things should be like terms let's check this one here i must look for a term with an a and a b squared let's see a b squared here is a and there is a b squared so i've got i've, I've got stuff colored in so i know i can't but i won't bother myself with that now let's see this one b cubed does not have a friend so now let's simplify this in other words let's group like terms i have now a cubed now minus 2a squared b minus a squared b should be minus 3a squared b okay um another way to look at this is to actually use the associative property as a matter of fact let me go ahead and show you how the associative property is actually going to work so what you're going to do is you're going to associate this stuff and say and i'm going to write this in red you're going to say okay i'm going to associate um minus um actually let me not even do that let me keep my pen here minus 2a squared b then your association uh, associative property kicks in here i'm going to have minus a squared b here plus a b squared uh, plus 2a b squared minus b cubed and actually that's all we do whenever we are simplifying or whenever you group like terms you are actually applying the associative property i just thought i should throw that in so now you can see we're gonna have a there minus 3a squared b and then plus 3ab squared minus b cubed and guys you have to really be fine with this answer because it is the final answer even if there are so many terms it is the final answer do not try and change it don't try and change it i beg you okay so that's about it we have done what we have simplified guess what we, we took the factorized form this is factorized because it is one term remember brackets mean one term and then we simplified we made it how many one two three four terms okay i'm gonna try um with you i'm gonna do the last one with you and i'll leave you with something to try the last one what if they give you something like this what if they say a minus 2b cubed so how would you go about that one so first thing we're gonna apply the laws of exponents this must be a minus 2b into a minus 2b into a minus 2b and then what i'm gonna do guys let me ask a question if you had two times three times four how would you multiply that okay unless you are genius then you can just say okay this is 24 okay but of course if you are really a systematic person and that's how our brains are i'm sure you are honest enough to agree with me that if i'm gonna have two times three times four i'm first gonna try and group this by myself and i'll definitely group it in a way that it is much easier for me for me in this case i would say two times well three times four is 12 and that's just associative property again and i know that two times 12 is easy 24 but again you could have gone and said two times three first then i'll multiply by four later so you'll have six times four and this is 24. so we're going to use the same logic to solve this thing here either we can take this first two or we can take this first now based on what i have done here i would recommend that you leave this one on the far uh, on the far left and deal with that because you know if, when you multiply a binomial with a binomial 
you are bound to get what? A trinomial. Yes, I hope you remember that, okay? Uh, a binomial with a binomial gives you a trinomial. So well, here we are experiencing with a binomial and a trinomial. Now, guys, let us see. Let us see. I gave you an old trick, remember? Once you see that these things are just one and the same thing, then all that you can do is to actually say, well, it's going to be a squared. I must get the product here. It's going to be a minus 2ab, but I must multiply that by 2. So I'm going to have minus 4ab, and I'm going to have here plus, okay, 4b squared. Remember that formula? Okay, let me just write it down here. You're going to say the first term and square it. Then you're going to say plus 2 times what the product of that. The product of that is a times negative 2b. So you see why we have a negative sign here. Then you're going to add the square of the last term, which is minus 2b all squared. That is the shortcut that I used. Otherwise, you could do the normal FOIA. And now I have a minus 2b. And then um, let me just rewrite this really 4ab plus 4b squared. Now, guys, at this point, you are just going to do what I did there. So I'd like to leave it here by challenging you to actually try this out. See if you can arrive at the final answer. And remember, you are always welcome to inbox us on Facebook page in case you are wondering, we are together for us, okay, CITC. So I'm Mr. G, uh, the head of education and training in that uh, organization, it's a nonprofit organization. So of course, donations are also welcome to help us to continue with this uh, lessons. So um, I'll leave it here, guys. I hope this was clear and I hope you have found it very useful. We are done with simplifying and expanding uh, uh, algebraic expressions. In the next video, I will be discussing with you now factorization, which I have kind of introduced. Now I will do that formally in the next topic. Thank you very much for watching.